Hey everyone, this is Ryan, and I'm going to be doing a video series on evidence-based dentistry, perhaps one of the most boring subjects <laughs> that we'll ever have to learn, but um, I hope to make it fun, or at least bearable. And this series will consist of five approximately 10 minute long videos covering about everything that we need to know for this upcoming exam. So what is evidence-based dentistry? Well, it's designing, performing, uh, or in our case, reading studies, both observational and interventional, to find out if clinical techniques and materials are proven to be successful and potentially applicable in our practice. So the big four things that we really care about are the accuracy of screening or diagnosis, disease frequency, etiology, or the risk factors or risk predictors associated with causing disease, and treatment efficacy or effectiveness. And these are the four things that we're going to be measuring with different tests and different measurements and calculations. Um, these are the big four that we are concerned about. So let's start with the accuracy of screening and diagnosis. I think it's important just to differentiate between these two. There's a slight distinction. Um, screening is targeted at uh, a large asymptomatic population and is mostly concerned with detecting disease. It's not quite as accurate, perhaps, as diagnosis or not as specific as diagnosis because it's targeted at a larger population. While diagnosis is classification provided to symptomatic patients, patients showing signs and symptoms that are specifically seeking care. So I think it's helpful to look at this diagram and just kind of work through it a little bit. So you start with a population, some big population, um, probably most of them asymptomatic. Um, perhaps they don't know that they have disease or they're not showing any signs of disease. So they undergo a screening and negative screens are, um, are fine and positive screens are referred to a diagnosis. And then here they are measured um, for specific uh, disease or risk factors um, and this is where the doctor will will make the call whether or not they have the disease and if they do then um, then you get uh, intervention. So how do we measure the accuracy of, of these screenings and these diagnoses in, in detecting disease? Um, well there are two main measurements and they're reliability which is also known as reproducibility or consistency and validity. So if we start with reliability, um, there's sort of two primary uh, uh, two primary methods of determining reliability. And reliability is all about getting consistent results. You do the same test over and over, and do you get the same results? So intra examiner uh, involves one doctor, um, and he or she uh, diagnoses or screens a patient waits a little bit and then screens them again or diagnoses them again and sees if they get the same result. Um, if they do, that's a reliable test. If they don't, it's not. And inter-examiner, you just take different people, different doctors, and see if they get similar results with similar methods. So the important thing to note here is that the second test must be blinded to the results of the first. Otherwise, it's not a true test of reliability. There would be a lot of bias involved if the second test had... Um, had any recollection of the first test results, which is often a problem with intra-examiner reliability. So here we have a uh, two by two contingency table, and it's not the first time, or well, certainly not the last time that we'll see these. And um, here you have an examiner A and an examiner B, and they're they're screening or diagnosing patients for the presence or absence of caries. And so you have pretty much two scenarios where they either agree that the patient has caries, they agree that the patient doesn't have caries, or they disagree um, in this way. So those are the sort of two scenarios here. And we can measure the reliability of the tests um, by percent agreement, by taking the um, total number of, agree, of uh, patients that they agree on and then dividing that by the total number of patients that um, they screened or diagnosed. 
Um, the problem with this is it's not a very accurate, um, not a very accurate calculation. So we use kappa value, which adjusts for the possibility of chance that we got a percent agreement based on chance. Um, it's a bit of a complicated formula. I don't think we have to use it. So the important thing to know is that if you get a kappa value of over 0.75, you have excellent reliability. It's a good test. And then the numbers here speak for themselves. So what's validity? It's distinguishing between health and disease. So you need to have a reliable test in order to have a valid test. Um, so you can think of it like reliability is a prerequisite for validity. So validity tests a, a test method or diagnosis or screening against a gold standard. So it's the ideal method, um, not usually feasible in a clinic. Um, I like to think of it as, as like, you know, this examiner is a professional ping pong player. He's playing against like this robot that he's never going to beat. But uh, you can see how good you can get compared to this robot. So this examiner A is never going to beat the gold standard per se. But you can see how close they get, how, how accurate they are uh, when compared to it. Um, I, I think it's important to note that if you're testing the effectiveness of a new treatment or a new method, um, this gold standard could just be any old examiner doing a proven method, and this A here could be a new uh, treatment modality that's being tested. So you kind of have to think, what are the what are the A and B? How how do I how do I set those up in a two by two table? So you'll notice that it's super similar to this last one here. We just uh, changed the agrees and made it a little bit more specific to validity. So instead of agree. Uh, here we have true positive, and here we have a false negative, false positive, and true negative. So what do these mean? Well, true positive means that the patient uh, was was seen was um, was was uh, seen to have caries, but it and it turns out that they do have caries according to the gold standard. Oh, that's a terrible circle there. Um, and a false negative is when the doctor says that the patient has no caries when in fact they do. So this is like a false hope. Um, you give the patient false hope when in fact they do have caries or any disease that you're testing. Here, a true negative, um, pretty self-explanatory. The doctor says they have no caries and they, they turns out they don't have caries. And false positive is like a false alarm. The doctor says they have caries when in fact they don't. Um, so False are the bad ones, and trues are the good ones. So how do we measure these? Um, well, anything in red is, is a calculation. So um, sensitivity and specificity are our calculations here. So sensitivity measures the accuracy of the test in detecting disease. So you have true positives over the total number of actually diseased according to the gold standard, so TP over TP plus FN. Um, and this will give you your sensitivity. And if you have a high sensitivity, you have a low false negative or false hope. You don't miss a lot of cases, which is good. So you want high uh, sensitivity. And this makes sense. If you have a high number here, that means you're probably going to have a lower denominator. So this FN is going to be a lower number. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, specificity is the accuracy of the test in detecting health. So if you have a, that's going to be true negatives over true negative plus false positive. So all patients who are actually healthy according to the gold standard. So again, if you have a high specificity, you're probably going to have a low false positive because if this number is high, chances are this denominator is going to be lower. So the best test, you're going to have more true positives and more true negatives relative to their count, their false counterparts. And then you can um, actually uh, judge the validity of a test by adding up the sensitivity and specificity. And if either one is one, that's a chances are a pretty darn good test. Now this is just uh, nothing too important. ROC it just measures the the accuracy of the uh, conductor of the of the experiment, the operator of the experiment, 
And so you just measure the area that under the curve. So the curve that comes up higher here has a higher area. So that's a better examiner. So just to review, these are the two um, measurements that we are concerned about for the accuracy of screening and diagnosis and the calculations associated with them. Great, so tune in for my second video. I'll be discussing disease frequency. Um, I hope this video is helpful and I'll see you next time.